Welcome to Firefly and I. My name is Anna and I travel full time in my converted Ford Transit Firefly with my little dog Sterling and my wonderful new kitten Inara. If you've been following us, you've seen some of our travels so far and we've been absolutely loving our time on the road. I've been partially or fully nomadic for most of my adult life and I would love to share with you some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Hey everybody, my name's Anna. Thank you so much for joining me again on Firefly and I. So this week we're gonna be continuing our four part series on how to get started in van life. Um, the first part of this series was how to make money on the road, followed by how to choose the right vehicle for you, whether that be an RV, a school bus, a van, anything like that. This week we're talking about do it yourself van build essentials. So what are the different things that you absolutely should have, whether you're doing things on a budget or going more all out like I did with Firefly. There is an online course that accompanies this four part series, which will end with campsites and community next week. Um, in that online course, I show you different ways to make money on the road, bring you through some of those exercises. Then I do some activities and information worksheets on choosing the right vehicle. And this week we'll be including a budgeting sheet where you can really see the breakdown of how much I spent on these different items. Um, and then that will also give you a place for you to plug in uh, your costs and see how that stacks up against your own budget. So the links to all of those are in the description below. Um, before we get started this week, I wanted to show you something really cool that we got to do. Uh, me and the kids got to spend some time out on a sailboat and, on the Pacific Ocean. It was super amazing as I've never really spent time on a sailboat like that, just um, in like the Caribbean where it's super calm. So take a peek. clearly a super awesome trip um, and then let's dive right in to the different van build essentials so let's start from the very beginning you first get a van or an RV or anything you're looking at something you really want to think about the insulation no matter what kind of vehicle you're in this is going to be really important to do um, because it is just a tin can basically and so you really need to insulate that you're gonna have a few different options in this realm. Personally for Firefly, I went with sheep's wool. The reason I did that is because the R factor is really good. It manages moisture on its own and it's all natural and it was very easy to install. The con of this is that it is a little bit higher price range. Um, if you're looking to do something different, um, the really great budget option would be foam board. You can also do spray foam. Um, be aware that spray foam does is quite hard to install. You may want to look into getting it professionally installed um, because it can bend out the sides of your van, especially in a cargo van style. Um, then you also do fiberglass. Personally, not a big fan. Um, you know, you really want to wear gloves make sure you're not inhaling that fiberglass and then I think the kind of other great option would be thin slate um, that again a little bit higher price range um, so insulation is obviously great for keeping things hot cold depending on the different weather the next fan build essential that you're going to want to be thinking about is that heating temperature wise particularly if you have pets like I do um, so as good as my insulation is, and I you know, really went all out, I got five fats of Havelock sheep wool and put them all in. So it really maintains a decent temperature in here, but again, tin can, right? So for heating, I have a Propex heater. Um, you can see the dial right here, and then it's mounted underneath the van. I have the HS2211 uh, version. Uh, there's also one that mounts 
that could be mounted inside the van as well. Um, so I chose the Propex because I was already going to have propane for the oven, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you can also get a diesel heater. The higher end ones are like the Wabasto heaters um, or S-Bar. Um, but you could get the Chinese diesel, he diesel heater as well. Um, that, you know, obviously comes from China. It's a lot cheaper, but there are whole forums of people online that really like that option. Um, if you want to, you know, spend a little bit less money, I would go with the Mr. Buddy. Um, this is another little propane uses the small propanes, or you could hook it to a big one with certain models. Um, this is going to be, you know, the more budget option. However, there are cons in that that kind of propane heater can cause condensation, unlike a dry heat with the propane here. And you will need to prop open a window so that you don't get sick from those heaters. One more note on temperature control, things uh, on the windows like Reflectix and a curtain between the cab and the cabin are also really gonna help you keep temperature control in your van. Um, now we talked about heat. Let's talk about cool. So um, for my system, I use fans. So I have a fan up top um, that is the Max Air fan. I chose that one because it has a rain cover, so it can even be open when there's rain, unlike the fantastic fans, which don't have that cover. Um, but both are a great option. I have one of those and then a skylight in the back. If you don't do a skylight, I recommend two fans. That way you can cause airflow. Um, if I open my skylight and put my Max Air fan um, going out, that will cause airflow throughout the van. I also have a separate little fan that I can just put on a counter and that will, um, you know, allow just a little more airflow in here. Um, to keep things cool, again, especially if you have pets, um, important to also be parking in shade, to be aware of where you're traveling, all of those things. So um, it's not a perfect system. Obviously, you can get air conditioners for these things. However, you really need to have shore power um, or a huge battery bank that would be extremely expensive. Um, there are little like swamp coolers, things like that you can get. Um, but Basically, managing heat, cold temperature, huge van build essential. All right, let's talk cooking. Obviously, very important. You want to be able to make some meals for yourself when you're living on the road. So for me, I went big with this because it's really important for me to have an oven. Um, I just cook for myself a lot more that way. Um, and I've lived on the road many times without an oven and always missed it. So I knew that was something I really wanted to build in, which was a big reason why I went for propane in the van at all. Um, just in general. So I got the Furion three range. So it has three different areas to cook here. And then the actual oven itself right here, you want to make sure that you get the right size trays to go in there. So again, really important for me to have an oven may not be important for you. If you're looking for more of a budget build, you could just get a simple, um, you know, like camping stove that you could just put on your counter. You could bring it outside. Um, it's a really great option because then you're not actually stuck cooking in the van. You know, sometimes if you're cooking a big meal in here, it can get pretty like pungent, you know, cook bacon and it's going to smell like bacon in your van. So a uh, simple, cheap, um, little like removable stovetop, great, great budget option. You could also, of course, get, you know, just a stove installed in there. Um, heck, I even know people that just do cold meals and use a little jet boil um, as like a very simple, um, very easy way to just get out on the road. So a uh, huge variety of options for many different budgets in this area. All right, now that we're talking about food, let's talk about how to keep it cold. So um, again, if you wanna do kind of a higher end uh, way to keep things cold, you can go for a fridge freezer model like I have here. I did get the more budget model in that I got the winter rather than the big Dometic uh, fridge freezer models, which were just a little too big and a little too expensive for my taste. The winter has been working absolutely fabulously. The Dometic may take up a little bit less battery power. So it's a trade-off for upfront cost or battery power in the long run. Um, but I love my fridge freezer. Another good you know, way to have more comforts at home, having ice for cocktails or um, having some easy frozen meals to just throw in a skillet, particularly when you're cooking for one, like I always am. Um, so I love this. If you saw my van tour, clearly you'll see that, you know, stickers are accumulating. Um, 
Some other options that you could do to keep things cold for more budget option, just get a cooler. Um, I would recommend something like a Yeti uh, that's going to keep things colder for longer. Um, obviously, you're going to have to keep replenishing ice for that, so it can be kind of a pain in the butt, but it is a good budget option. Um, the other option, if you don't like the... Um, this style, where it's more of a chest, is to get more of a standing fridge, like you see in a lot of RVs. Um, the chest is going to be more energy efficient, which is why I got it. It can be a pain in the butt to be like always, you know, searching for things in there. Um, however, I absolutely love the chest version and I would never go back up to a standing version. Um, but it's a really great option if, you know, they tend to be maybe a little bit cheaper. Um, Norcold is a good one for that. You can also get ones that run off propane for that. So you're not using as much energy. Um, so yeah, lots of options on how to keep your food cold. All right, let's talk about the delightful conversation of a toilet in the van. So you're going to hear differing opinions on this from different people of whether it's really a van build essential or not. Um, I personally think it is essential, especially in the time of COVID, because it makes you a lot more self-contained. It opens up where you can really sleep. You're not frantically trying to find a bathroom ever. Um, especially as a woman, it's hard to find places to pee outside. So if you're a woman and you want to go the super budget option, I recommend getting a Nalgene that you can pee into with a little pee funnel, like a Shiwi or something like that. Um, this is not my pee jug. It's just a water bottle. <laughs> and, um, if you want to have something a little bit more than that and you're still on a budget, you could always do something like a Luggable Lou, which is basically a five gallon bucket with um, either kitty litter in it or you can do bags that you dispose of. Obviously, that's not the most eco-friendly option if you're doing it every day, but if you just want it as an emergency, that's a good plan. Um, I have the Nature's Head composting toilet and I love it. It has a fan that, you know, is allowing all of that to come out, um, like any smell that actually is in there, which really there is like basically no smell. It's just a little bit like earthy, uh, whereas I've had comp or cassette toilets, things like that in the back that I um, think just smell a little bit more like there's just a certain odor to them um so i wouldn't do it in a really small space but if you have something like an rv or a schoolie where you can close a door that could be another option for you that's a little less expensive than the nature's head you can also do a do-it-yourself composting toilet which many people have done and i think is a great option i think that the nature's head has a few design flaws um, that make it a little bit like harder to clean or um, just harder to deal with and it is pretty expensive. So the do-it-yourself composting toilet option is a great way to go. And speaking of like bathroom stuff in general, we talked about the toilet. Now what about a shower? People ask me about this all the time. So for a shower, you have several options again along the budget spectrum. If you're just doing some simple budget build, this little washcloth, a little bit of water, good enough. Then you can go to, you know, truck stops, you can go to campgrounds, whatever you need to do to actually do a full shower. Um, if you are looking for something a little bit more extensive, you could do what I did, which is build in a place for your sink. So this swivels outward like that, and then it can act as like a simple little shower system. Um, the other thing you could do, which I also have is a solar shower. So this is like a big bag that you put out in the sun, it gets warm, and then you can take that outside. You can also get cool little shower encampments that will be able to do that. Obviously, if you're looking to go on the big end of the shower thing, you're like, I need a shower every day. That's super important to me. Then you can build a shower into your van. You can get a camp lux, which is something I'm looking into for maybe future We'll see. But um, that's like basically a, a portable um, little shower that hooks into your water system. It's an instant hot water heater and then it has a retractable head. So you could put that in the back, put some little shower curtains up. Um, so it just depends on like how important it is to you to shower every day. Um, you know, I was a raft guide for a long time. So maybe I'm just like more comfortable with, you know, not having a hot shower every single day. Now let's talk lighting. So as you can see, I have track lights that are built in and I have fairy lights around the edge. So lighting, obviously a van build essential. You don't wanna be up in the middle of the night with nothing like that. However, you could use a headlamp. You could use a little Lucy solar light, which are really cool. You could use string lights, fairy lights, 
or you can build in lights like these ones that are attached to your electrical system. So easy ways to do it yourself on a budget or spend a little bit more to have it all built in. So obviously my build is pretty power hungry. I've got that fridge freezer. I've got the lights. I've got, um, you know, laptops. I'm working from the road. I have my iPad, all of these different things. So for me, I went pretty big with my electric system. I have a 170 amp hours of lithium battery. I have 320 watts of solar on the roof. This was clearly fairly expensive, especially with an install. If you want to go more of a budget build, what I recommend is getting something like the Goal Zero uh, Power Core power bank and that's going to give you a lot more um, just ease of access to that it's going to give you a lot less power um, but if you're doing a budget build where you don't need a ton you just need to charge your devices I recommend something like that with a portable uh, solar panel or that you could plug in and charge while you're driving so um, pros and cons to each obviously I'm going to be expanding my power system, put another battery in there. I just put shore power capability in my electric system as well, which means that I could hook up to any sort of um, like house or at a campground or something like that. Um, I, again, need a ton of power. So if you're doing a budget build, really try to cut back on the things that you need electric for, because that's going to really start to up your prices quite a bit. Another essential thing when you're living in a van is storage. So you want to have whatever kind of storage really fits your own needs, which is where building your own van can really come into handy. I have a big garage for all of my gear and, um, you know, I've built in the cabinets and everything. If you're doing a simple budget build, you can also just throw a bunch of bins in there, make them look cute, make them look however you want. Um, I really like these kind of storage bins that kind of fold in have the nice little top right there. And then I use these kind of storage cubes. And these you can just get off of Amazon. This one's my over shirts, as you can see. And um, this just really helps keep everything super organized, which is really, really essential when you're living in a really small space, is that everything should have its own space and should be completely organized let's talk water. You're going to want to be able to drink water frequently out on the road. So I have a 20 gallon water tank, a nice retractable head here, and a very deep sink. Um, obviously, again, not a super budget option for the water. If you want a more budget build, what I would recommend is getting those exchangeable, you know, like five or 10 gallon water things with just a little pump on top. You can do an electric pump or you can do just like a really simple push pump. Obviously, you can also just load up on water bottles. Again, not a pee jug. <laughs> and, um, you know, you get gallon plastic bottles. It's just going to be a little bit harder to constantly be finding those things. However, um, if you're just wanting something simple, cheap, easy, great option. All right, so we've now gone over kind of the true essentials, right? Temperature control, including heat, cold, and insulation. Um, how to get water and food on the road. How to go to the bathroom, keep yourself clean, and how to store things. Those are really all you very much need to live in a van. So if you're just doing simple budget option, just stick with those at first, get out there on the road, and start having fun. Uh, this section right here, I'm just going to tell you about a few of the non-essential, but things that I really love to have on the road. So... Uh, first off, I'll talk about is a speaker. Having a good speaker for music is so huge. Being able to go out, hang out with friends outside or in the van, whatever, and listen to music, such a huge thing. Um, second is the lighting. So um, I have extra lighting for outside seating. Um, I have an awning outside, which is another really great item to have. Mine is by Moonshade and is a really wonderful item um, to just expand your living space quite a bit. So outside lighting and an awning, really great. Then I have a portable power station. So again, we talked about earlier, if you're not gonna be at putting a ton of money into your own power station, something like this is a great budget option. I have a great electric system, but I still love having a portable power bank just in case my battery dies. If I wanna run the projector at night, also a great fun 
non-essential but really good item to have in the van um but if i want to run that projector then i do it off of my portable power station so i'm not turning my inverter on at night this way i can also charge my laptop if i'm away from the van like down by the river or something like that and i want to do that so having something like this which mine is the jackery is a really great item to have in the van next is a portable laundry bag so this laundry bag is super cool. It opens up and there's these little filaments inside, as you can see here, and you put your laundry in here, swoosh it all around and do that. Especially in the time of COVID, this is great for washing masks. I also, Sterling has to wear diapers at night now. Um, so I wash those in here, just little laundry items, underwear, stuff that you don't wanna go all the way to a laundromat, but you're running low on. So yeah, little laundry bag. Fly tape. Oh my gosh, this stuff is huge. If you're if you're going around in a place with flies, super highly recommend that you get fly paper. Um, I have a first aid kit and a tool kit. These are fairly essential, I would say. Um, you know, just to have just in case of things going wrong. But kind of obvious that you want those. And then finally, um, I have a little Polaroid camera here. This is clearly not essential, but something that I really love and has brought me closer to people on the road when I can just go up, take a Polaroid of them, give it to them. I'm not like a hugely social person and this really helps me, you know, have a reason to go up to people if they're with a really cool other van or something like that. Um, I use it at van life gatherings to just connect with people and kind of give me an in. Um, if you're a little bit antisocial like me, this is a great way to do that and a great way to preserve some memories that you make along the road, put some little decor up in your van. And um, yeah, so this is something that I've just loved, loved, loved having. So that's about all that I'm going to suggest to you today. There's obviously a ton more that you can put into these vans. Mine's chock full of gear and fun stuff and you know obviously all of my outdoors gear is very essential to me um, but what's going to become essential to you is what you really want and need on the road so um again you can look at that budgeting sheet included in the online course and really start to think through you know what do i want on the road what do i need on the road what's going to make me happy so um that's all going to depend on budget and your own personal wants and needs. I hope that this video is really helpful to you. I know some of you are probably wondering where Sterling and Anara are. They're with my friend inside um, because it is uh, just a little overwhelming to film with them sometimes. So <laughs> um, you will get plenty of footage of them, I promise, in upcoming episodes. I'm going to be changing to an every other week uh, posting schedule, as I had posted a community post on before. Um, posting every week was just getting a little overwhelming with everything else I have going on. So I will see you in two weeks for the final episode of this series of how to get started in van life. We'll be talking about campsites and community. Um, so that means how to choose kind of where you want to go once you start van life and really how to build community on the road with some of my thoughts and reflections on that. Um, so make sure to check out the online course below. Make sure to hit subscribe, like, comment, share. If this is helpful and um, you want to share on like Facebook groups where people are asking questions, that would really help me out, help this channel out. Um, I love you all. Mwah. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and I will see you next time.